Access your free language gifts right now, before they expire. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the 24-hour survival phrases PDF cheat sheet. Do you know enough of the language to survive for 24 hours? If not, then this survival phrases cheat sheet will help you get by. Second, the how are you and how to answer it writing workbook. With this printable PDF, you'll learn all the ways to ask and answer the question, how are you? And you'll be able to practice writing the phrases out as well. Download it for free right now. Third, 30 music words for beginners. Learn how to say song, lyrics, melody, and much more with this quick one minute lesson. Fourth, can you talk about roads in your target language? Learn how to say road, highway, crosswalk, and much more with this quick vocab bonus. Fifth, must know Father's Day vocabulary. Can you say Father's Day in your target language? You'll be able to with this quick one minute vocabulary lesson. Sixth, free language learning audiobooks. Want free access to our huge library of beginner level audiobooks? Then click the link below, save the audiobooks to your device and listen and learn. They're yours to keep forever. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to finally master the language with lessons by real teachers and our complete language learning program, get 31% off all premium or premium plus plans with the pretty big deal sale. To get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the description below. Download them right now before they expire. This is Karen Lee, and she's at City Hall registering her address. The civil servant who is helping her asks, What is your email address? 您的邮箱地址是什么? Listen to the conversation and focus on the response. Ready? 您的邮箱地址是什么? 我的邮箱地址是 K-A-R-E-N at InnoLand.com Once more with the English translation. 您的邮箱地址是什么? What is your email address? 我的邮箱地址是 K-A-R-E-N at InnoLand.com My email address is K-A-R-E-N at InnoLang.com Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how the civil servant asks, What is your email address? First is, 您的 Your 您的 This starts with, 您 You, when using formal Chinese. 您 您, 您 is often used to show respect to a person, such as a senior citizen or a customer. 您 Now, you might be more familiar with 你 meaning you. 你 As this is a city office setting, the speaker chooses to use the more formal 您 Next is 的 The possessive marking particle. 的 的 Think of 的 as a way to indicate possession. The word it follows possesses the thing that comes after it. In this sentence, it marks 您 You as the possessor. Together it's 您的 A formal way to say your. 您的 Next is 邮箱地址 Email address 邮箱地址 邮箱地址 There are two parts to this. First is 邮箱 Literally, mailbox, but it refers to the electronic mailbox in this context. 邮箱 邮箱 Next is 地址 Address 地址 地址 Together it's 
邮箱地址 Email address 邮箱地址 Remember this because you'll see it again in Karen's response. Next is 是 In this case, it's like the is in What is your email address? 是 是 Last is 什么 What? 什么 什么? Altogether, it's 您的邮箱地址是什么? This literally means your email address is what, but translates as what is your email address? 您的邮箱地址是什么? Remember this request. You'll hear it again later. Let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember how Karen says, My email address is karen at inolang.com. karen at inolang.com. First is, what my what this starts with what i what what after this is da the possessive marking particle da together it's what my what Next, do you remember the word for email address? Email address. 邮箱地址. Together, 我的邮箱地址. My email address. 我的邮箱地址. Next is, 是. Here, it's like the is in my email address is. 是. Next is Karen's email address. K-A-R-E-N at inolan.com First is the name Karen spelled out. K-A-R-E-N Next is the at sign, usually pronounced as I T I T. Next is Inolang. Most Chinese people would pronounce it as In No Lan Inolan. After that is Dian Dot Dian Dian. Note, in North China, people tend to put an ER sound after the final syllable of many words. So in a northern accent, dian would be pronounced as diar. Last is com, usually pronounced as kamu. Together, Karen's email address is k a r. E N I T Inolan Dian Kamu. Altogether, it's What the Yoshang Diji Shi K A R E N I T Inolan Dian Kamu. My email address is K A R E N at Inolang dot com. What the Yoshang Diji Shi K A R E N at inolan.com. The pattern is. What the email address. My email address is email address. What the Email address.
To use this pattern, simply replace the email address placeholder with your email address. Imagine your email address is L I P I N G at inoland.com. Say, my email address is L I P I N G at inolang.com. Ready? My email address is lipping at inolang dot com. My email address is lipping. N G I at inolang. Dian com. In China, Mandarin is often referred to as 普通话 meaning common dialect or common tongue, and almost everyone in China speaks it. Apart from this common dialect, there are over two hundred. Local dialects in China. People from different parts of China are likely to have a variety of accents when speaking Mandarin and foreign languages. The way English letters and words are pronounced in this lesson may be different depending on where the speaker is from. When having difficulty understanding someone in Chinese or English, such as when getting someone's email address. It's better to double check with the person you're speaking with to make sure you understood correctly. Let's look at some more examples. Listen and repeat, or speak along with the native speakers. My address address is k a r e n i t. Inolang.com. My email address is l i p i n g at inolang.com. My address address is b e n at inolang.com. 我的邮箱地址是 l i n i t inolang com。我的电子邮箱是 y l at inolang com。Did you notice how I gave my email address? 我的电子邮箱是 y i l at inolang com. My email address is y l at inolang com. Instead of 邮箱地址 the speaker said 电子邮箱 which literally means electronic mailbox, but translates as email. 电子邮箱 The pattern is. 我的电子邮箱是 email address. My email is email address. 我的电子邮箱是 email address. This can be shortened even further. Y L I T Inolan 点 com. The entire first part. 我的电子邮箱是 My email is is omitted here because it's clear from the context the speaker is giving their email. This is the shortest answer to a request to get your email address. You should be aware of this sentence pattern, but for this lesson, we use the pattern. 
我的邮箱地址是 email address. My email address is email address. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say come? Come. Come. And how to say dot com. Dian come. Dian come. Do you remember how to say inolan dot com? Inolan dian come. Inolan dian come. Do you remember how to say the at sign? At. At. And how to spell Karen? K A R E N. K A R E N. Do you remember how to say email address? 邮箱地址，邮箱地址 ，and how to say my email address？ 我的邮箱地址，我的邮箱地址。Do you remember how Karen says my email address is Karen at inoline.com？ 我的邮箱地址是 k a r e n at inolan 点 com。我的邮箱地址是 k a r e n at inolan 点 com。Do you remember how to say what？ 什么？什么？ And a formal way to say your. 您的，您的。Do you remember the formal way to say your email address? 您的邮箱地址，您的邮箱地址。Do you remember how the civil servant asks? What is your email address? Your email address is what? Your email address is what? Let's practice. Imagine you're Mark Lee. And your email address is m a r k i t inolan 点 com. Respond to the civil servant's request. Ready? 您的邮箱地址是什么？我的邮箱地址是 m a r k at inolan 点 com. Listen again and repeat. 我的邮箱地址是 m a r k at inolan 点 com. My email is m a r k at inolan. com. Let's try another. Imagine you're Sasha. S a s h a. 
Ready? 您的邮箱地址是什么? 我的邮箱地址是 s a s h a at inolan com. Listen again and repeat. 我的邮箱地址是 s a s h a at inolan com. What the S A S H A at Yinolan com. Let's try one more. Imagine your high tau. H A I T A O. Ready? 您的邮箱地址是什么? 我的邮箱地址是 H A I T A O at inolan.com Listen again and repeat. 我的邮箱地址是 H A I T A O at inolan.com. What H A I T A O at inolan.com. 你擅长什么？我擅长语言。once more with the English translation. 你擅长什么? What are you good at? 我擅长语言. I'm good at languages. First of all, you'll need to learn how to say, What are you good at? That's. 你擅长什么? Listen to it again. 你擅长什么? 你擅长什么? This Chinese sentence literally translates as You good at what? But it means, what are you good at? Now, how do you answer this question? The pattern is 我擅长 Skill This Chinese sentence literally translates as I good at skill But it means, I'm good at skill For example I'm good at languages. 我擅长语言。我擅长语言。Here are a few more phrases you can use with the same pattern to talk about your skills. Languages. 语言。语言。Languages. 语言. Sales. 销售. 销售. Sales. 销售. Typing. 打字. 打字. 
typing. 打字 Video editing 视频编辑, 视频编辑. Video editing 视频编辑. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. 你擅长什么? 我擅长销售 What are you good at? 你擅长什么? I'm good at sales. 我擅长销售 你擅长什么? 我擅长打字 what are you good at? 你擅长什么? I'm good at typing. 我擅长打字. 你擅长什么? 我擅长视频编辑. What are you good at? 你擅长什么? I'm good at video editing. 我擅长视频编辑. Okay, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say, what are you good at? Imagine you're good at sales. Do you remember how to say sales? Say, I'm good at sales. Now, answer the question saying you're good at sales. 你擅长什么? 我擅长销售 Now, imagine you're good at typing. Do you remember how to say typing? 打字打字 Say, I'm good at typing. Now answer the question saying you're good at typing. 你擅长什么? Now imagine you're good at video editing. Do you remember how to say video editing? 视频编辑, 视频编辑. Say, I'm good at video editing. 我擅长视频编辑. Now answer the question saying you're good at video editing. 你擅长什么? 我擅长视频编辑 Hi,大家好,我是李音如 Hi everyone, my name is Yinru Li In this lesson, we'll talk about some of the most basic and essential social expressions in Chinese Social expressions are phrases and things we say in social situations. For example, thanking someone for what they've done for us or apologizing to someone for things we have done to them. And um, actually, one of the most mostly used English social expression I personally find very useful is excuse me. You know, we can use excuse me, um, before we have to interrupt someone or even make, you know, apologies. Well, I've been trying to find the exact phrase for excuse me in Chinese, but I have failed because there is just no one phrase in Chinese that would catch all like excuse me would. 
So to say excuse me in Chinese, it really depends on the social context. For example, when we have to get someone's attention, like in a restaurant, right? Um, we would say excuse me in Chinese, but in this case, a very polite way to say it is simply say ni hao, like you say hello. So ni hao can be used you know, to catch someone, to get some attention, and then you tell them what you want. 你好,我要这个这个, I want this and this, okay? So, um, this is the first way. The second way is when we have to interrupt someone. Um, in this case, we would say 打扰一下. 打扰 means to interrupt or to disturb. And 一下 literally means a bit. Okay, or, or a sec. So, um, 一下 is often used after verbs in a spoken language, colloquial language to soften a command. So, 打扰一下 is like to say, oh, can, I excuse, uh, can I interrupt you for a sec? 打扰一下 Now, many times when we say excuse me, it's because we have a question. We want to ask something or someone for something. Um, there is one phrase that's very common in China. We use this phrase before asking a question, and this phrase is 请问. 请问, 请 means please, and 问 means ask. So 请问, please ask. It's actually used to say, um, may I please ask? Or can I ask you a question? So you can say, 请问, 请问厕所在哪里? Excuse me, where's the bathroom? 请问这个多少钱? Excuse me, may I ask how much this is? So very useful phrase, 请问, to ask questions. Now, the last one, 请等一下, okay, literally means please wait a bit. You know, we, we know 请 means please and 一下 means a bit. So 请等, the verb 等 means to wait. So 请等一下 is to have someone to wait up a sec. Okay, 请等一下. Okay, these are a few different ways to say excuse me in Chinese. Well, actually, in most cases, I think it's not necessary to respond to these excuse me's. But, well, if you feel like responding or if the other person who asks you um, is not really saying what they have to say, you can, you can keep the conversation going by saying, 怎么啦? 怎么啦? literally means what happened? What's the matter? Well, it's actually, um, it's like saying, yes, how can I help you? 怎么啦? It's a pretty uh, common phrase and it can be used in formal and informal situations. So it's a good one to have. 怎么啦? Yes, what is it? 怎么啦? Okay, so this is how to say excuse me or how to and how to respond to it if you feel like it. Okay, next let's look at how to say thank you and how to respond to thank you. Well, I'm sure many of you already know that <laughs> thank you in Chinese is 谢谢. 谢谢. Yes, this is the most common way to say thank you in Chinese. 谢谢. Okay, I'm gonna teach you a little trick. <laughs> so to make your thank you a little bit more sincere or a little more heartfelt, you can add ni after 谢谢. So 谢谢你. 谢谢你 is like saying oh, thank you, really thank you. And uh, as opposed to 谢谢, sometimes feel like okay, just thanks. It's like something you have to say. So to avoid that, you can add ni after 谢谢 to make a very sincere, you know, thank you. 谢谢你. Okay, now when someone says 谢谢 or 谢谢你 to you, you can respond by saying first 不用谢. 不用谢. Okay, 不 means not or no. 用 means need in this case. And 谢 means to thank. So 不用谢 is to say, Oh, no need to thank me. You're welcome. 不用谢. Okay? The second way to say you're welcome is 不客气. Again, 不 means not. 客气, well, 客气 is a little hard to translate. 客 means guest. 客气 is like to be, to uh, act or treat like a guest, which means too many um, formalities or too formal, too courteous, okay, like putting some distance between you and me. So no need for any of these formalities. 不客气, okay, you're welcome, don't mention it. 不客气. Now, next, let's look at how to say sorry, how to make apologies. There are three common ways to say sorry in Chinese. First one is 
，对不起，对不起。对不起 literally means ah,、uh, I I can hardly face you, okay? Because you know, because something I've done that's terribly wrong, that's I feel really bad about. So, 对不起 is a pretty serious, pretty strong apology. That's why I put three bars next to it. 对不起 is a pretty strong apology. 对不起 okay. Ah,、uh, next it's 不好意思不好意思 in comparison, it's a little lighter. It's a little more casual. So 不好意思 literally means to feel、uh, embarrassed. So I feel embarrassed for something I've done, or I feel embarrassed for something I'm going to do to you. So 不好意思 it's a little more casual, a little lighter apology than、uh, 对不起 Now next. 抱歉 is also a very common way to make apologies. Well, it can be used in like serious apol, like as a very serious apology or a, a lighter one. So it's really a personal preference. And I would say people in Taiwan probably use 抱歉 more than people in mainland China. Okay, now、um, if someone says sorry to you and you wanna assure them it's okay, it doesn't matter, it's okay. And there are also a couple different ways. First is 没事儿，没事儿 literally means no issue, no big deal. 没事儿 don't worry about it. Okay. Also, actually, 没事儿 can、uh, be used to respond to thank you as well. Okay. 谢谢啊，没事儿 It's like thank you, no problem. 没事儿 Okay. A pretty useful expression. 没事儿 And another way to say is it's okay. It's 没关系没关系 means it doesn't matter. It's okay. No worries. 没关系 All right. Now, let's go over these expressions one more time.、Um, ways to say "excuse me" first is 你好你好 We can use it to get people's attention. 你好打扰一下 Can I interrupt you a little bit? 打扰一下请问 May I please ask to ask a question? 请问 and 请等一下 Hey, please wait up for a sec. 请等一下 and 怎么了 Yes, what is it? How can I help you? 怎么了 And、um, two ways to say thank you. 谢谢谢谢 and 谢谢你不用谢不客气 Both means both mean you're welcome. And three ways to say sorry. 对不起 ，Yes， 对不起 ，This is a serious one. And 不好意思 ，Still sorry, but not as you know as strong. 不好意思 ，And 抱歉 ，Kind of in between. 抱歉 ，And、um, it's okay. We can use 没事儿 or 没关系，没事儿，没关系。In the next section, let's take a look at how we can use these、um, social expressions in real life situations. Now, in an apartment building laundry room, a young man is putting his laundry,、uh, putting his clothes in the washer, but he stopped. And here's how the dialogue goes. 先生，请等一下。怎么了 ？And the man who stopped the young man. <laughs> Explains that the washer he was going to use is actually out of order. So the man, the young man, thanks the neighbor, and here's how their dialogue goes. 谢谢你，不客气 Okay, now the young man found a washer that actually works, so he puts his clothes in and closes the washer door, but it makes a loud noise, so he apologizes, and here's how he does it. 不好意思。没事儿。Okay, very simple dialogue. Let's look at them one by one. First, 先生，请等一下。First word, 先生，先生 means Mister or Sir. So we use 先生 to address someone whose name we don't know. Of course, it's a male. 先生，请等一下。We know 请等一下 means please wait a bit for a bit. Wait for a sec. 请等一下。And the response is, 怎么啦 What is it? What's going on? What happened? 怎么啦 Okay. And next is、um, saying thank you and how to respond to thank you. They use 谢谢你 and 
不客气 ，Thank you, you're welcome. And the third dialogue is to make apology because he feels bad that he makes a loud noise. Okay, actually, some of Chinese don't really care for that, but I guess this is a very polite neighbor. So he apologizes by saying, 不好意思 and the response is, 啊，没事儿 ，Don't worry about it, no issue. Okay, now let's look at a few more scenarios、uh, uh, as a way to practice. Okay,、um, let's say you are in a restaurant and you want to ask the waitress for a spoon. So you get you get the waitress attention, waitresses attention by saying, you can say, 你好 Yes, this is a good one. 你好你好有勺子吗 Hello, do you have a spoon? 你好，有勺子吗 ？Okay, next. Let's say you are meeting a client. You're supposed to meet the client at two, but it's now two thirty. Of course, it's 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 really late. Even by Chinese standard, it's late thirty minutes. So you make an apology by saying, 对不起呀 In this case, you probably should use 对不起，对不起。我迟到了 I'm late. 对不起，我迟到了 Okay, the third one. Your friend、uh, brings you a gift from her trip back home. So you take the gift and you thank her by saying, 谢谢，我谢谢你，谢谢 Okay, 谢谢，我很喜欢。I like it a lot. I like it very much. 谢谢，我很喜欢。Now let's review. Do you remember how to say "excuse me" to get someone's attention? <phone rings> 你好，你好。And how to say "excuse me" when you have to interrupt someone? 打扰一下，打扰一下。Do you remember how to say "excuse me" before you ask a question? 请问，请问。And how to say "excuse me" to have someone wait up for a second? 请等一下。请等一下。Do you remember how to say yes after someone gets your attention? 怎么了？怎么了 ？Now do you remember how to say thank you? 谢谢，谢谢。And how to say thank you in a slightly more sincere way? 谢谢你，谢谢你。Do you remember how to say you're welcome, as in no need to thank me? 不用谢，不用谢。And how to say "welcome" as in "no need for any formalities." 不客气，不客气。Do you remember the strongest way to say sorry? 对不起，对不起。And the more colloquial way to say sorry. 不好意思，不好意思。How about a third way to say sorry? 抱歉，抱歉。Do you remember how to say it's okay? As in, no big deal. 没事儿，没事儿。And how to say it's okay? As in, it doesn't matter. 
，没关系，没关系。Well done. In this lesson, you've learned essential Chinese social expressions. That's it for this lesson. Thank you for watching. I'm Yin Ru, and I'll see you again on ChineseClass101.com. 再见。Hi, 大家好，我是李音如。Hi, everyone. I'm Yin Ru Li. In this lesson, we'll be taking a close look at days of the week in Chinese. Now, on the whiteboard, I've listed seven days of the week in Chinese. So let's start from Monday. Monday in Chinese is 星期一，星期一 ，and then Tuesday 星期。R, 星期二 Wednesday, 星期三，星期三 and then 星期四，星期四，星期五 It's Friday, 星期五 Saturday, 星期六。星期六 ，and then Sunday you can either say 星期天，星期天 ，or 或者星期日，星期日。Now some of you may have noticed that all the words start with the same 星期 at the beginning, right? 星期 or 星期 is a word that means week. Uh, literally, 星期 means star period. 星期 So our ancestor used to name the days of the week after stars or planets. For example,、um, Saturday is the day of Saturn. Sunday is the day of the sun, and Monday is the day of the moon, so on and so forth. But、um, then, in until Qing Dynasty, the Chinese officials thought. Hmm. Let's just make it simple and easy for everybody to say and remember. Well, let's just say Monday is 星期一 literally week one. You know, so 星期一 actually means day one of the week. 星期一 and then Tuesday is the day two of the week, so it's 星期二星期二 and then. You know, San is three, so Xing Qi San is day three of the week. Si four, Xing Qi Si, day four of the week, Thursday, and then Xing Qi Wu, day five of the week, Xing Qi Liu, day six of the week. Well, until Sunday, you know, it's not actually it's not Xing Qi Qi, it's not seven day or week seven. It's it's Xing Qi Tian. 天 could mean sky or day, 星期天 Or another way to say it is 星期日日 means sun, 日星期日 Sunday, right? 星期日 But 星期日 is a little less less common than 星期天星期天 So again, the seven days of the week in Chinese is 星期一星期二星期三星期四星期五星期六、星期天 or 星期日 okay.、Um, there are two other ways to say the seven days of the week, but don't worry, they follow the same format, same pattern. We just use different words for for a week. So this way, we can say、um, 礼拜 We use 礼拜 to say week. 礼拜 um, Originally, 礼拜 refers to the religious service. So、um, the Chinese people realize that you know those Westerners, those Christians, they seem to do their religious service or worshiping at the same day of the week. So every day, every time they do that, that means a week has passed. So let's not just call their religious service a week. Why not? So Li Bai has evolved and become another way to say week. Li Bai. So same way, 礼拜一、礼拜二、礼拜三、礼拜四、礼拜五、礼拜六、礼拜天。You know, 天 we just learned that 天 means day. So the worship day is Sunday. 礼拜天 All right. Well, the third way、um, is to use 周 to say week. 
Zhou means circle or cycle. So we cycle through the seven days a week. So the first day of the cycle is Zhou Yi, Zhou Yi, and then Zhou Er, Zhou San, Zhou Si, Zhou Wu, Zhou Liu, Zhou Ri. It's Sunday. So here is how you can say the days of the week in Chinese in three ways. Let's take a look at how we can use these vocabulary words in everyday conversations. Next, you're going to hear a dialogue between two friends, and they're talking about days of the week. Now, let's take a listen. <clears throat> One more time, a bit slower. So, 星期三 is Wednesday. So, the question is 今天星期几 literally means today, week, what number? Okay, 几 is used to ask numbers, you know, or especially lower number. So, 今天星期几 is the standard way to ask what day of the week it is today. 今天星期几? And the answer is 今天星期三. We know 星期三 is Wednesday and 今天 is today. So this literally is 今天星期三, a uh, today, Wednesday. Okay, notice there's no 是, there's no is in this sentence. You could say 今天是星期三, which is also you're gr grammatically correct, but 今天星期三 is more common and it's perfectly fine. So 今天星期三? Today is Wednesday. Now, let's say today is Friday. How do you say that in Chinese? 今天星期五, day five of the week. 今天星期五. And what about Saturday? Today it's Saturday. 今天星期六. 今天星期六, what comes after Saturday? Today is Sunday, fun day. 今天星期天, Sunday. 今天星期天. So to answer the question, if someone asks you, 今天星期几, you can use this pattern. 今天星期, and then depending on the day of the week, you know, you can say from 星期一,星期二,星期三,星期四,星期五,星期六,星期天. You can also use their alternatives to say week. So you can also say 今天礼拜, then days of the week, or 今天周 of the week, days of the week. So this is how we can tell and ask days of the week in Chinese. Now let's review. Do you remember the most common way to say Monday? 星期一, 星期一. And how to say Tuesday? 星期二, 星期二. Do you remember how to say Wednesday? 星期三, 星期三, and how to say Thursday. 星期四, 星期四. Do you remember how to say Friday? 星期五, 星期五, and how to say Saturday. 星期六, 星期六. Do you remember how to say Sunday? 星期天, 星期天. And how to say today? 今天, 今天. Now, do you remember how to say, today is Wednesday? Today is Wednesday. 
今天星期三。Well done! In this lesson, you've learned the days of the week in Chinese. That's it for this lesson. Thank you for watching. I'm Yin Ru, and I'll see you again on ChineseClass101.com. 再见 How are your Chinese listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Mama and child are talking. Child, what did you do today? The order is how? You finished the work? Finished. 在学校写的。打扫房间了吗？打扫了呀，我今天很早起来，打扫了房间。好，晚饭做好了，可以吃饭了。我不饿，今天不吃了。你就是想玩是吗？你得好好吃饭。好好好，我知道了。我吃完饭可以玩吗？可是可以，但是别玩太久。<笑>儿子今天做了什么？顺序是怎么样的？妈妈和儿子正在说话。儿子今天做了什么？顺序是怎么样的？你写完作业了吗？写完了，在学校写的。打扫房间了吗？打扫了呀，我今天很早起来，打扫了房间。好，晚饭做好了，可以吃饭了。我不饿，今天不吃了。你就是想玩是吗？你得好好吃饭。好好好，我知道了。我吃完饭可以玩吗？可是可以，但是别玩太久。First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. 一名女子正在给出租车司机指路。出租车走了哪条路线？请在这里右转。好的。过了咖啡店左转，然后过了银行后右转。嗯，我知道了。酒店会在左边。行，就在这儿停，谢谢。是有绿色标识的那个大酒店吗？是的，看见前面的车道了吗？开到那儿就好。出租车走了哪条路线？一名女子。正在给出租车司机指路。出租车走了哪条路线？请在这里右转。好的。过了咖啡店左转，然后过了银行后右转。嗯，我知道了。酒店会在左边。行。就在这儿停。谢谢。是有绿色标识的那个大酒店吗？是的，看见前面的车道了吗？开到那儿就好。Hey everyone, welcome to the monthly review, the monthly show on language learning, where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is your first steps to learning a language: the fundamentals welcome pack. Is there a best way to learn a language? 
Many learners waste time trying to find the perfect resource, but never stick with anyone long enough to make progress because there's always a new, shinier app. But resources aside, is there a best way to learn a language? Well, there is. Keep watching this month's episode. You'll discover why you'll learn faster by starting with the fundamentals, the trunk-based knowledge approach to learning, how to get our free welcome pack, and much more. But first, if you're looking for new free language resources and downloads, here are this month's new lessons and resources. Be sure to download these now before we take them down in a few days. First, the 24-hour survival phrases PDF cheat sheet. Traveling and want to learn enough of the language to survive? Then these survival phrases will help you get by in the first 24 hours. Second, the how are you and how to answer it writing workbook. With this printable PDF, you'll learn all the ways to ask and answer the question, how are you? And you'll be able to practice your writing skills as well. Download it for free right now. Third, 30 music words for beginners. Learn how to say song, lyrics, melody, and much more with this quick one minute lesson. Fourth, can you talk about roads in your target language? Learn how to say road, highway, crosswalk, and much more with this quick vocab bonus. And fifth, must know Father's Day vocabulary. Can you say Father's Day in your target language? You'll be able to with this quick one minute vocabulary lesson. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. Your first steps to learning a language, the fundamentals welcome pack. So, is there a best way to learn a language? You can download a shiny app and start learning words on day one. But is that the right way to learn the language? Well, if you want to just know words, sure, that works. But if you want to learn a language from the ground up, understand how it works, be able to create your own sentences, and speak freely, you'll quickly realize that just learning words doesn't help you do that. What you need is not the next shiniest app, but to start with the fundamentals. Part 1. Why starting with the fundamentals is the best way to learn. What are the fundamentals of languages? Fundamentals are the alphabet, pronunciation, beginner-level grammar rules, and core words and phrases. And this, starting from the fundamentals, is also something called trunk-based knowledge. If you imagine a tree, it starts from the roots to the trunk and to the branches and then the leaves. And the leaves are the details, the words and phrases. And the roots and trunk are the foundation of it all. If you focus on the leaves or learning just the words and phrases, you may get to know some of the language and be able to say some things, but you'll struggle with coming up with your own sentences and speaking freely. And if you've learned like that for a bit, you'll soon realize you don't actually understand the language and need to backtrack and start over. But if you start with the roots and trunk, the fundamentals, you learn to read, the pronunciation, the grammar rules, then everything else you learn later on is built on top of these fundamentals and will make mastering the language easier than the other way around. For example, if you learn the alphabet, then writing, reading, and pronunciation become attainable. And with the proper pronunciation, you can start speaking. Skip it and you'll get nowhere. So starting with the fundamentals is the best way to start learning a language, or anything. Now, you may wonder, isn't this obvious? If you're learning in class where a teacher took the time to plan out the curriculum, it is obvious and it's done for you. But if you're learning on your own, it's not. And if you're using an app or watching videos that weren't designed to teach you the right way, you're starting off on the wrong foot. Starting with the foundation is also, in a way, the faster way to learn a language, simply because it saves you the extra time of backtracking to relearn the basics that you missed. So how do you start with the basics? Let's get into the second part. Part 2. How to learn the basics with our free welcome pack. Anytime you attempt to learn something new, your very first step should be to ask, what are the must-know basics? If you're learning in a class with a teacher who planned out the curriculum for you, it's all done for you. But if you're learning alone, as is the case with many language learners, and if you don't know the right way to approach learning, then it won't be as obvious. You might download an app or start watching YouTube videos, and you'll quickly find yourself struggling to understand how the language works, how the conjugations work, how to create your own sentences, and what's right or wrong. You'll always feel like you're missing something. And that's exactly why we created the Fundamentals Welcome Pack, which you can get for free. Keep watching till the end to find out how. 
The Welcome Pack is a pack of PDF cheat sheets covering the fundamentals, alphabet, beginner grammar, conversational patterns, words, phrases, and culture. You can also start learning with our recommended learning pathway, but be sure to use this Welcome Pack at the same time. And here's how. For the alphabet cheat sheet, you should spend the first two or three days practicing writing out the alphabet for 10 or 20 minutes a day or so. If your target language uses a non-Roman alphabet, then it may take you longer. For example, with Japanese, most language classes spend up to a week on the hiragana and katakana. Next, you'll find the core words and core phrases cheat sheets. These are all the words and phrases that a beginner must know. Just spend a few minutes a day reading and saying these words out loud. You can also practice writing them out, which will reinforce the alphabet as well. Remember, you don't have to memorize all the words all at once, because you'll see these words again and again later when you're taking our lessons. Then there's the grammar cheat sheet that will teach you simple grammar patterns. Copy out the sample sentences and try to create your own sentences as well. With the conversational phrases cheat sheet, you'll learn some common questions and all the possible ways to answer them in the target language. And these phrases will use the same grammar patterns that you learned earlier. If you want to download our welcome pack, just click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about the power of a teacher and the difference a teacher can make as you work toward achieving your speaking goals. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way, and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. Learning a language can be tough because there's just so much to do. There's grammar, reading, speaking, writing, and so on. But there is a way to learn and practice all seven skills of a language in one shot without overwhelming yourself and without having to split your attention across tons of books, apps, and programs. How to master the seven language skills in one shot without overwhelming yourself. How? In this guide, you'll discover one, the seven language skills, two, why you don't have to learn each skill one at a time, and three, how to pick up each skill effortlessly if you follow our specially designed learning pathway. But first, if you don't yet have access to our language program, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description. First, so what are the seven language skills? They are speaking, listening, reading, writing, grammar, vocabulary, and culture but that's a lot to learn all at once. Plus, resources cover only one or two skills at a time. And that's why you'll see learners who are good at reading or translating words, but not so good at speaking and listening. So second, how can you learn and practice all seven skills without overwhelming yourself? With our learning program, it's just a matter of taking a quick five or 10 minute lesson. When you sign up, you'll automatically get a learning pathway of lessons to follow. Just play a lesson and you'll hear a quick practical conversation. Then our teachers slow it down and explain all the words, grammar rules, and cultural nuances inside. So already you're improving your listening skills and learning vocabulary, grammar, and culture. And if you shadow or repeat what you hear, you start speaking as well. You can also read along with the transcript while you're taking the lesson, which means you're practicing reading. So you've already covered six of the seven skills with one quick lesson, which took you just a few minutes. Once you're done with the lesson, if you want more practice, you can review the conversation one line at a time with the dialogue tool, which helps with listening and reading. Practice speaking the lines from the conversation with the voice recording tool. Review the grammar, cultural notes, and vocabulary with the lesson notes. And you can send the lesson vocabulary to your word bank or flashcards to drill them later. To practice writing, just leave a comment in the comment section and our teachers will respond to you with feedback. You can write out the lesson dialogue and vocabulary into a personal notebook. And if you're a Premium Plus user, you can practice writing with the help of your teacher. Now, after every few lessons, you'll get multiple choice assessments, which test you on listening, reading, grammar, and vocabulary and hand-graded assessments, which test you on speaking and writing. 
And the goal of these assessments is to test you on what you learned in the last few lessons, so that you can practice the language and so you don't forget what you've learned. So, if you just follow the learning pathway and take the lessons, you can easily learn and practice all seven language skills. But first, if you don't yet have access to our language program, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description. If you want to successfully learn a language, then it's all about time. The amount of time you spend learning and exposing yourself in the language. And the more you expose yourself to the language, the better the words, phrases, and grammar rules you learned will stick, simply because you get used to them. And for that, you need a ton of lessons and a ton of exposure. The good news? You get just that with our lesson library inside of our learning system. How to learn tons of language and boost your exposure with the lesson library. And in this quick guide, you'll learn all about it, how to level up your language and boost your exposure. But first, if you don't yet have access to our language learning system, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. One, so what's the lesson library? The lesson library is our collection of learning pathways, all made by real teachers, from absolute beginner level all the way up to the advanced level. There are hundreds and hundreds of lessons inside, including our three minute series, top 25 questions you need to know, conversational phrases video series, and more, giving you all the lessons you need to learn and master the language. And if that sounds like too much, don't worry. Two, here's how you level up your language with our lesson library. When you join, you instantly get a recommended pathway of lessons, so you have a clear pathway of lessons to follow. Instead of wondering where to start, just look for the recommended pathway on your dashboard and at the top of the lesson library. The level one pathway is for absolute beginners. Level two is for beginners, and you can go all the way up to level five, the advanced level. So if you follow the recommended pathways, you can take your language from zero to speaking and understanding advanced conversations. Three, you can customize your learning to boost your exposure. If you want to take on other lessons on top of the recommended ones, just visit the lesson library, scroll through the pathways available for your level, and add the ones you like to your dashboard. Four, you can master speaking, reading, writing, and listening. Just sort the pathways by skill via the side menu inside the lesson library and find the pathway that's right for you. So, if you want to learn the language the fast, fun, and easy way with our quick audio and video lessons and get full access to hundreds and hundreds of lessons, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. If you're tired of knowing and speaking the language at a basic level and want to express yourself fluently just like native speakers, then you'll need to learn grammar. The problem? It can be tricky to learn. But don't worry, in this guide you'll discover how to learn and master grammar with the Grammar Bank. One, where to get all of the grammar explanations you'll ever need. Two, the best way to learn grammar that's right for your level. And three, how to expose yourself to real examples until the rules become natural to you with a study tool called the Grammar Bank inside of our learning program. But first, if you don't yet have access to our program, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description. First, what is the Grammar Bank? The Grammar Bank is like a grammar dictionary, except online. It's a database of the must-know grammar rules and explanations that makes it easy to look up specific rules and learn them. Look for it in the top menu of our site. Two, how do you learn grammar with it? The best way to learn grammar is not to just study rules, but to learn in context and hear the grammar used in real life. And that's exactly how you learn with our lessons. You learn a quick conversation and hear how the grammar rules are used within that conversation. Three, what if you come across grammar that you're not familiar with? Or what if you want to review a specific rule without going back to redo a lesson? That's where the grammar bank comes in. You can look up grammar rules and get the explanations, examples, and links to lessons where we cover these rules. You can also sort grammar by learning level. So if you're an absolute beginner and want to make sure you know all of the absolute beginner grammar rules, you can do just that with the Grammar Bank. You can also sort the rules by spelling, category, and lesson series. And if you want to get used to the grammar patterns so that you can use them in conversation and become fluent, 
The best way is to expose yourself to examples as much as possible. Grammar is hard at first, but gets easy once you get used to it with enough exposure. Be sure to access the related lessons inside the grammar bank and listen to the native conversations that use the rule as much as possible. So, if you want to become fluent and speak perfectly, you'll need grammar. Take advantage of the grammar bank inside of our learning program. But if you don't yet have access, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to sign up. Great work. Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and ebooks for free. Just click the link in the description.